Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. Is this position cool here? The lighting's terrible. I don't have kidney issues. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at some amazing animations that you can do that you probably wonder how they're done. And they look complicated, but they're really simple. I'll show you a way that you can make them very, very easily. So if you love animations and you love JavaScript, this is the one for you. So take a look at that. We have these awesome layout animations where we have uh, active navs moving around, shaping around, and then we have our cards shifting layouts. It's just cool stuff. It can be done really quick. So let's get into it. And before I actually do, check out the courses down below if you're interested in learning more about web development. Let's go. All right, so let's take a look at these animations. Really cool, and you're gonna see how simple they are, but they're really impressive. So let's start with our nav bar here. So we have this arrow here, and when we click through it, as you can see, you have this cool bouncy effect, and it actually attaches itself to whichever nav element is active. And then the text also becomes blue to kind of show that off. But look at that. See, if I click here, it gets more speed I don't know, it's really cool. And it also resizes itself. So if this portfolio text is longer, it's gonna turn longer. But look at that, poof, 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 really cool. And then we have a grid here with items and we can expand these like that, poof. And look at that, we have nice layout animations and they reposition themselves. I can close it up like that and like that. So that's pretty cool. So let's get going. So what do we need? Well, we need a VS Code. If you don't have a VS Code, you can download it on the internet. And then I just have an empty index.html. Um, I just linked up my style sheet here, which is empty. So if you wanna do that, it takes a second. And then my app.js, which is empty. This is where we're gonna write all of our JavaScript code, but you know that because you're an expert programmer. That's what I heard. All right, cool. So what are we gonna use to make these animations? So GSAP, yeah, that's a pretty cool one. GSAP is my favorite uh, animation library and they have a cool extension called Flip, which allows you to do layout animations. So everything you saw there was a layout animation. So go over to CDNJS and we're gonna copy over GSAP min. So this includes all the functionality for GSAP and that's gonna be pasted right above here of our app.js, but we also need the plugin specifically for these layout animation that is Flip. So let's copy Flip and paste it in. Lovely, all right, so that's it. That's our whole setup. So let's actually write some H HTMLs. So what do we need? Let's, let's do the nav first. So in the body, I'll make a space here, uh, just a nav with a UL. Uh, we'll add a class to this, we'll call it nav links, okay? Nav links, and then this UL, we'll, we'll drop a div here, and I'm gonna show you why. Um, we're gonna add a class of nav item to this, okay? And in here, we are gonna have an li with an a tag. I'm not gonna make this go anywhere, but I'm just gonna say our story, just like that. And in here, I'm gonna put that line. And what is that line? It's just an empty div an empty div that we're gonna style up. I'm gonna give it a class of active nav as well. All right, so that's our line, just a, just a div that we're gonna add a background color to and a height. And yeah, cool. So we have our nav item, and now we can just make a new one, nav item, like that. And this one is not gonna have the line. It's just gonna have the li with the a tag, and we're gonna call this projects like that. And let's just copy paste this one more time down here. Okay, and name this maybe portfolio. Okay, so yeah, we just have one div extra here, which is the line and then everything else is pretty much the same. So nice and clear so far, hopefully. Let me open up this up so you can see what's going on. So that's what we have, super cool. All right, let's go over to our style.css and style this model level up. Uh, we'll go to the top. Uh, I'll add this font family just just for fun. If you want to add a font, add a font. If you don't, then you're missing out, bitch. Okay, I'm gonna add a bit of padding to this. Let's do tree rem. Uh, I'm gonna add the display flex, right, which kind of puts everything 
Uh, it doesn't do anything. Uh, what this play flex does is it puts all the items horizontally, all the children, but we have only one child, which is the UL, so nothing's gonna happen to it. But what we can do is add a justify content center just to stick it in the middle. And now what we can do is on the actual nav links, this is parentheses the UL, okay? And you're gonna see if we add display flex to this one now, all the items go horizontally one next to each other, right? Because UL and all the children, one, two, three, are gonna all go horizontally. And then I'm just gonna remove their list style and say none. Did they have a list style? I think they did. So that's cool. And then I wanna add some spacing in between them. So if you wanna add spacing, just add a gap, five rem. Look at that, cool. And then just make the font size a tad bit bigger by saying 1.2 rem. Okay, that's looking quite good. I don't want them to be blue. So let's head down here and say nav links a tags. I'm gonna remove the text decoration. So that's the line underneath it. And then I'm gonna add a different color. So let's do 252525. And then a font weight of bold. All right, so it shouldn't be blue anymore. So that's perfect, looks good to me. All right, next up, nav item, right? What I wanna do is style up that active nav bar. So this is our line. So what do we do? We'll add a height to it, right? Three pixels should look good. And then I'll add a background color of, we'll pick a bluish color, 35385AE0. All right, and then a border radius of one rem just to kind of round it up at the edge. And there it is, cool. But what I wanna do is actually position this absolute. Um, because this is gonna move all around, right? It's gonna move to projects, it's gonna move to portfolio. So the way I, I'm gonna do that is adding a position. You can do this without position absolute. So I could leave it like this, and when we add the JavaScript code, it will work. The problem is, once you click through these, you're gonna see a tad of a jump between the text. They're gonna shift a bit to the right and to the left uh, because this is gonna move around, so uh, it's gonna affect the elements. But when you add position absolute, you're removing it from like the current flow of the document. So it's not gonna affect all the other elements. So just for the sake of that, we'll add position absolute. Did that make any sense? No, too bad. Rewind, I'm joking, I'm being mean. Uh, okay, so it's gone, okay, position absolute gone. Where is it? Uh, if I add left zero, which should technically put it left zero here, uh, we still cannot see it, uh, and that's because it's try it's trying to position it based on the page, right, on the document. So we need to tell it like, hey, position it based on on this div here. So we can go up to the nav item. We made that specific div here. See nav item, just for the sake of being able to position this active nav to it. All right, so nav item. Let's see where it is. I'll add the background to it so you can see it better. There it is, right? Cool. So now, if I add the position absolute and add a position relative to this, then it's gonna be position relative to the nav item. So it should show up down there. So let's say left zero and bottom zero, I want this to be, and the width should be 100%. Stretch it all the way across. And as you can see, it's right there. So that's perfect. So we can remove this background color now, and there it is. However, I do wanna push it a tad bit down because it's a bit too up there. So we can go to bottom and add a minus 10 pixels. And that's just gonna slightly push it down. Is that too much? Yeah. Are we working with eights? Let's work with eights. Cool. Okay, so I hope that's that's easy peasy. And that's all the CSS we actually need. Now the actual code is gonna be so simple, you're gonna, it's gonna blow your mind. And I'm gonna remove this position absolute as well to kind of show you what I mean by the, the weird error message. My voice cracks, I'm a teenage boy. GSAP, so let's go here. So what, what we need to do first of all is register this plugin. Uh, to let GSAP know that we have this added to our project. So that's it. So that's gonna, now GSAP's gonna know, hey, I can use Flip. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just get the links. So I'm gonna say query selector all, 
and I'm gonna just select nav item A, all right? So all the A tags, all the actual links. Cool, and then I'm gonna do the active nav. So this is the line, document the query selector active nav, all right? Cool, and that's it. So what I'm gonna do is just go over these links. I'm gonna do a for each, so I'm gonna loop over all of them. I'm gonna have access to each link here. I'm gonna run an arrow function. So looping through each link, I'm gonna attach an event listener to each one of them. Add event listener, on click. And now what do I wanna do on click? Well, basically what I wanna do is gsap to, I wanna change the colors. So links, comma, curly brackets, color, is gonna be 252525 and hit save. Okay, so what does that do? Click, click, nothing. Why do we do this? Well, we're adding this. Basically, every time we click through our items, we wanna make sure we reset the colors of, of all of these. Because when we click on one, we're gonna change it to blue, right? Uh, but the previous one that had blue on it, we wanna remove it. So it's just an easy way to do it. Just grab all of them, remove the, put them back to the color they were, and then we're, we'll add the blue later. You're gonna see what I mean in just a sec. Um, actually, I can just show you now, check this out. So how do I check which element is active? So I'm clicking on one, right? I want it only to be on that one that's active. You can do if document, dot queries, not queries, if document dot active element triple equals two. And what I can do is get the event here. So when we click on something, we know what we clicked on. And the way you can do that is say e dot target. All right, so the thing that I just clicked on now, gsap to, I can animate this link um, to the color of Let's, let's do this bluish color, 385AE0, and hit save. Okay, cool, let's take a look. It don't work. Do we have an error? We have an error. E is not defined. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, so this should have been inside here. My apologies. So make sure it's inside your event listener. And when I click through, see, as you can see, it turns blue. And when I click to this, that turns blue. But if I don't have this uh, this GSAP up here, if I remove that, as you can see, I click on that, it turns blue. I click on this, that turns blue. And now all of them are blue because we're just adding the color, but we're never removing. So we wanna make sure at the beginning that all of them are set to gray or this black color, and then we'll add whichever element is active. I think we can just do link here, I believe. So if document active element is the link, that should still be fine. Yeah, it's fine. So we don't even need this event. Bye-bye, because we're looping over it anyway. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So how do we actually do the line animating? It's gonna blow your mind. GSAP flip is so simple. So what we need to do is, I'll just leave all of this logic here with the turn uh, navs blue, all right? So that's kind of what we're doing there. And then down here, we wanna, wanna move the line. Okay, so how do we move the line? Well, we'll define the state like that, and we can say flip.getState. And here we're gonna pass in the active nav, all right? So basically, to this flip.getState, you wanna pass in the element that you wanna animate. What do we wanna animate? The freaking line, goodness sakes. So, all right, so that's all good. So we pass in the line. And now, what we'll do is, what do we wanna do? Well, I wanna put this line in the div that we are in. So what I mean by that is, see how this active nav is currently in this div here. I wanna basically pluck this out and put it in here or in here. And the way we can do that, check this out. This is not related to flip. This is just JavaScript. We can do link dot append child and I can append the active nav. And what that does is look, boop, boop, boop. See, I'm just moving that line over 
from from the first one to the second one and to the third one. So you get that effect. Now that doesn't animate. To actually get this animating, all we need to do is say flip from our state. And what I want to pass here is a duration. So let's say 0 0.5 seconds. And absolute, we're going to pass an absolute. And we're going to put this to true. We're always going to use this as absolute true. It just looks better. All right, and that's it. Let's take a look. Poof, poof, and it works magically. And as you can see, it also resizes itself. And that's pretty much it. Now take a look. If I remove the position absolute from here, okay, cool. Remove, poof. Okay, it's still there. Okay, why am I not getting the jumping effect anymore? Active nav. Okay, it looks like it works. I think it's because I added some sort of margin or something, but it messed it up. If it doesn't, then it's even simpler. Save. I think when you have items below it, actually. So if I have a, I think that was the problem. Uh, let's say I have a card here, right? Let me just style this up quickly. Just, I want to show you this thing. Uh, card, okay, I'll add a background of, of gray, right? And this has a width of 100% and height of, of 20 VH. Cool. Just to have something on the screen. Okay. But uh, did you see that? See, that's the problem when it's not position absolute. It actually changes the layout. See? So that's why if I go back here and add a position absolute, I can remove this margin now. So let's get rid of that. And what did we do? Bottom minus 10 pixels and left zero, right? Okay, so with position absolute now, it's gone. Where is it? What am I missing? A whiff, 100%, cool. Look at that, and now you don't have that weird shifting issue. So that's just, that's just kind of how you do it. Okay, what we can also do to add the elastic effect is we can do an ease of elastic dot out and this takes two properties we'll do 0 0.1 and 0 0.5 this just looks good this is the one i found and then when you click through it boof 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 but it's too fast now because how the easing works so we're just gonna up it to 1.25 i feel like that looks pretty good well well and well so that's one that's our first effect the second effect we need to go back to our our code here and I'll keep the card. Let's just do another one here. Uh, I'll do a section here where we have a card like that. And in here, I'll just say awesome sauce and add a sauce. Cool. And then I'll just add a bit of lorem ipsum. Let's do 20 tab and close. Okay. And then all I'll do is just duplicate these two more times, these cards. or Actually, let's have four. One, two, three, four. And then I'll just change some of the text here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so let's do let's do pretty card and animation. And finally, this is crazy stuff. Cool, save, and that's it. Now let's actually style this up. So in our section this time, we are gonna do a display grid, okay? So let's take a look, nothing's gonna happen yet. Well, where's the color coming from here? Okay, let's get rid of that, let's get rid of this. Okay, so there we go. And let's get the cards to show up. Cards, we'll add a height to it, a fixed height of 15 rem. Add a border radius of one rem, a cursor of pointer to indicate that we can click on it. All right, let's see what we have. And uh, you cannot see anything yet, which is cool. Um, boom, 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 boom. Okay, cool. And then we'll add, let's add a display flex to this. All right, so they're like that now, but we're gonna put it flex direction column. Perfect. 
because what I want to do is to a justify content center and align items center. Let me add a background color to this so you can see it light blue. Uh, actually, let's do this color here, which I really like that one. Okay. And that's what we have. All right. So you can see it just stretches all the way out now. That's not what we want, but that's cool. Um, so how do we do our grid? We'll do grid templates columns and we'll do repeat six one FR. All right. So we're making a six column grid one, two, three, four, five, six, but two of them is missing here, which is fine. We don't need to worry. I want to add a gap between them so we can do grid gap, we'll do three rem and I'll add a big margin of 10 rem and 50 rem like that. Oh, that looks horrible. Don't worry. We all good. Uh, okay, so on the cards, we need some sort of uh, the way the reason why it looks like this is it's just going to take up each space. But what I want to do is essentially have four, one, two, three, four. But when one opens up, it goes three down here which I think looks really cool. All right. So that's kind of what we're going for. Um, so to get it in that position, what we want to say down here is grid column. So each column, oh, it, each card should stretch out three spaces. So you can see span three. All right. And that's going to basically stretch it out three spaces. So remember we have six in total. So one, two, three, one, two, three, and then the other two drop down here. All right, cool. Let's increase the font size to 1.2 rem. We'll add a box shadow. Here's a trick, by the way. So that's how it looks now. Let's add the padding, padding five rem. All right, cool. You're not going to see this text, by the way, so don't worry about it. Here's a cool trick, box shadow. And you can do 0 0.7 rem, 0 0.7 rem. This is on the X and Y. And then you do zero for the blur and black. And that looks really cool. Oof. I like that. That looks cool. Maybe not black, black, but something like that. Nice. Not happy with it. There we go. That's cool. Okay. What else do we need? Um, doo -doo. Oh, cool border to this. That's going to make it look even nicer. Border. And boo, 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 let's do four pixels solid and we'll copy this color over again. Boof. That's cool. Gaming vibes activate. Oh, let's add some gap in between these because we have this display flex. So we can just do two rem and boom, there we go. We have space. Okay. I don't want to focus too much on <laughs> on the CSS because it doesn't really matter. Uh, what we can do is just grab the card for now. Uh, the, the paragraph here, and I'm just going to make it disappear. So I'm going to say display none. But before I do that, I want to style it up a bit. So I'll do a font size of 1.2 rem. I think it already has it on, so we don't need it. I want to change the line height to 2 rem and a height. I don't need that either. That's it. Just the line height like that. Cool. Um, okay. And then I'll add the, uh, what's it called? The display none. Well, I'm going to make it disappear. Cool. And then what we're going to do is add a active class to this. So when we, it gets the active class, then it's going to go display block. So it's going to appear again. And then also the card is going to get the active class. Uh, for it to actually like expand out, right? So what do we want to do when we click on this? I want whatever card it is to span out and stretch out all the way, taking up this whole first column. So the way we can do that, is say grid column. I want you to start off from one and span six spaces because that's how much we have in total. All right. So that takes, takes up the first column all the way. And then what I want to do is say, make sure it's also on the first grid row and the order is zero. So it's always the first one up here. 
and the height of it should be auto, whatever amount of space it needs, depending how big the paragraph is. Okay, just expand to whatever space you need. Okay, and finally, what I want to do is have a card is inactive. And this is just going to be a grid column of span two. So why? Why do we do this? Well, basically, when I click on one, I want that to receive the class of active, but all the other ones to receive the class of inactive, which is going to add a grid column of two. So that means when I click on one, all of these are going to turn to column twos, which means they're all going to fit on this one row. If we don't have this, they're all going to jump to a new line and make another row, which is not going to look good. So as you can see here, when I click on one, so these are currently taking up um, how much space? Let's take a look. Three, right? And we're going to lower it to two when we click on it. So as you can see, they became two. And when I click again, they become three. Two, three. It just looks cool. I don't know. I think it just looks really clean. Okay. Um, all right, and that's it. Then we can do our Java JavaScripty. So let's head over to JavaScript, and we're gonna add the cards down here. So let's just gra grab all the cards. Document query selector all card. There we go. So make sure it's query selector all because we want to grab all of them. And then we're going to do our classic for each loop like we always do. I'm going to get the card and the index here. But we're going to need both of them. And yeah, pretty much the same as we did above where we add a click to each. So we want to make sure we can click on each one of them and run an arrow function here. And remember the state thingy we did, get state for the flip con state so what do we want to animate flip get state of each of all the cards right cool and then we what we want to do is add add the active class to the clicked one and add inactive to the others so they change their size okay so first of all let's say Let's make a variable called is card active. And this is going to be whichever car card that has a class list that contains the class list of active. All right. None of them have it now, but this is going to check for it. So if there's a there's a card that has a class name, a class list of active, make sure you save it in here. And then what we're going to do is do another loop. So we're going to say cards for each. And here we're going to have other cards and other indexes like that. And you're going to see why we do that because we're going to do some comparisons here. So by default, what I want to do is other cards, class list, remove active. And other card, class list, remove, what did we name it? Is inactive. Is inactive. Okay, so what is going on? So when we click on whichever card here, when we click on one, it's gonna remove everything. It's gonna remove any cards that have active, any cards that have inactive. But we never added it, so it's doing nothing for now, but that's okay. What we can do down here though, is say if exclamation is card active, All right, then card class list dot add active. All right, so if the card that we clicked on doesn't have the class of active, add it. So let's see if that works. And we can also check the other functionality to see if it works. So four cards, right? Click and da -da. look, it got the class of active. I click on this one. And that got the class of active. However, see if I don't have this functionality up here, if I just take it out, we're just adding it to all of them. See, click, click, active, 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 right? They're all active now. 
So at the beginning, we're looping over and removing all the actives and removing all the inactives. All right, cool. Now what else I need to do here is, so we're adding the active, but we're never adding the inactive to the other ones. So to do that is very simple. We say if is card active and if the index does not match with the other index, then other card class list add is inactive. Okay, so now take a look. I click on the first one, Awesome Sauce, it adds the class of active, and all the other ones get the class of is inactive. So as you can see, it behaves exactly how I want. I click on this, this gets active, all the other ones get inactive. So what does this code mean? Well, we check if the card that we clicked on has the class of active, and then we compare the indexes. Uh, one is from the first loop that we did up here. And the other one is from this loop that we did down here. So it checks, hey, do these two match? Make sure they match. If they don't match, then it's probably another element. Um, and that's it. That's how you write up a little functionality to add one class of active to a card then inactive to the rest. Okay, now for the actual animation, the actual, like how GSAP works is super simple. It is always super simple. You just go down here and say flip from the state that we just made here where we passed in the cards and, and that's it. You just say duration one second. You can add an easing to it like expo out and then absolute. Set that to true and it just kind of works on its own. Look at that, <laughs> really cool. Awesome, yay, so happy. If you wanna further animate, you can do stuff in here. There's like on complete that you can pass in or on start, on complete. Uh, yeah, you can run other good stuff here. You can do GSAP to, let's say you wanna get the card, the P tag or something, right? And you wanna do a Y to 500, I don't know. So when it completes now, boof, it goes down, all right? So you can do loads of stuff with this, but I'm gonna keep it nice and simple because we already did two awesome animations and they look really cool. And thank you so much for watching. And that's gonna be it for me.